the back. Pretty big venue. You know, it's empty and matchroom have not come in and put their stamp on it. Mm -hmm. I remember last year walking in, you know, all the carpet was in the TV screens, the trussing was up. Yeah. So I've actually never seen it like this. I know this is your first time, Jack. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, just looking at it, it's absolutely massive, isn't it? And it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we've got the tennis court, so it just feels a lot different, but a uh, great venue. Yeah, seeing footage from last year, you can really see the hype that was building here with all the fans and all the tables. Can we expect that this year, do you think, or is it going to be bigger? I have a feeling it's going to be bigger just because, um, not just from a, a fan's perspective, but also players, mm. you know, we've got the 128 pros and we've got the qualifiers. There's a lot of amateur pool players around the world that have even messaged me, how do I get in the event, how do I qualify? Yeah. And I think because what we've seen last year when Jason won, all the fans, you know, there were about 3,000 people in this venue last year and it was really noisy and we didn't know this existed in Vietnam so to be here last year and seeing it and witnessing yeah. all the fans and the excitement I think it's got a lot of the pool players uh, you know sort of excited and wanting to come here and play. Yeah I bet and I think last year a lot of players have said that because of the large crowds it did add a bit of pressure because now our pros have kind of experienced that do you think this is going to be play up to their their skill set now they know what to expect? Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, all the top players in the world, you know, when they play in all these mm. open events or the majors, we always feel like it's pretty much the same pros that are there at the end of the event. But as I just said, I think the fact that, you know, for years we've played pool tournaments with one mm. man and he's dog watching, you know, so to come to new territories like Vietnam and sort of experience it where we didn't know this sort of existed. You know, I remember um, showing up, I think it was on the finals day last year, and the, the crowd to get in was just all the way around the building and we drove around the back and we was thinking, how long? this bleeding queue going to be it just seemed to go on forever and yeah. I think on day one or two Fedor Gorse was about to start his match and he was like a movie star in here and I remember speaking to him saying Fedor what, what's going on here what, what have I missed he said oh it's through my YouTube ch channel I didn't know uh, the sort of fan base existed and the love for pool and mm. you know it's just uh, a real special place to come and we spent a few nights in the pool halls some of these pool halls here Jack 100 tables 11 at night, you couldn't get on a table. There were four or five people to every table. Wow, okay. you know, it's, it's very unique and yeah. uh, a, it's a real special place for nine ball pool and uh, players to come. Yeah, I bet. And if you don't mind, talk me through that final between Alvin and Jason. What was that like with this place packed? To have a final like we did last year in this arena couldn't have been a better final if you picked it went down to the final rack and Jason Shaw you know he, he'd struggled in the open events to be fair up until that point and Alpin you know such a, a prolific winner on the WNT tour uh, two-time world champ just come up a little bit short but it was a it was a great final and you know very fitting for 3,000 fans to be in here mm -hmm. and sort of see it go right down the wire you know it, it was a big moment for the tour I feel yeah no for sure this really does set that mark now for big events particularly in Asia as we go into the Reyes Cup which we saw yesterday with the press conference that hype is brewing and I think Hanoi particularly this year is going to be even bigger and yeah no I'm excited I'm sure you are Yes, I mean, obviously, it's your first time here yeah. in Hanoi. Obviously, you know, the matchroom team, they're just having meetings over there. And yeah. do you know what? I've been sat in the meeting for the last hour. Even experiencing that, I've never been any, in, in anything like that before. You know, was, I still class myself as a pool player, even though I'm obviously not a uh, professional anymore. I don't play, but I've obviously got that pool player's mindset. And, you know, pool players don't appreciate what goes into these events. You know, to be stood here sort of two or three weeks before the event, you know, we've flown all the way from England. Mm. We've been to Philippines for two or three days. Mm. Then we've flown through the night to be here in Hanoi, Vietnam, and just watching, you know, there's like 12 people over there, Emily, and, you know, will mm. from transport and just making sure everything you know the arena's right and there's so much more involved than uh, I even imagined. Yeah no it's, it is crazy and I think for me as well it's my first time coming to these site visits and it's pretty manic but it's also exciting. It's a few weeks away now we've got the Perry Open right before it in Da Nang yeah. that looks yeah. a cool place you yeah. know shout out to the, the the owners of the Perry Pool Arena there we had it last year Fedor Gorse defending champion so he'll be flying into Da Nang trying to win that trophy and uh, might try and get myself there as well because it looks a beautiful place. Yeah I'd love to go myself um, but back to this upcoming uh, tournament, yep. I've got to ask, 
Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I just don't know, mate. Um, I'm not very good at picking these winners, but yeah. I, I did pick Shane Van Bowen to win the US Open, so that's actually my best finished. I was going to say, he was pretty yeah. close. Yeah, off picking players, uh, obviously Fedor, what he's achieved this year, winning all three majors, the, the gore slam, as mm -hmm. we call it now. It'd be hard to see past him, but you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of good players. Yeah, no, it'll be awesome, and I can't wait. Come in now. <laughs> Carl, we're here at the historic train street. Uh, tell me, what's it like? You've been here before. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, just looking around, it's first of all, it's absolutely sweltering. It's so hot, but you can tell by your t-shirt. I know, mate. I'm dripping, but you know, looking around here, it's amazing, isn't it? It's very unique. It's and awesome. and uh, you know we've come down. Unfortunately, we're gonna we've missed a train, but never mind. I've seen it. You haven't. And uh, yeah. I've got a little bit of a su surprise coming up because after this, we're gonna go to the local pool room and meet a couple of famous Vietnamese players. That sounds awesome. What, what's the? Because uh, obviously you've been here before. What's the level like of local players? Yeah, I mean obviously there's a couple of players that stand out. You got Win Antoine, very talented left-handed player from Vietnam. And then we've got Don Quoc Quang, who won the Scottish Open this year. He's won a ranking event. Both players trying to, you know, win one of the big majors, one of the big, big tournaments they have on the World Tour. But you know, very talented, very good players. We're a couple of weeks away from the from the big event. What can people expect from the players? Yeah, I mean, uh, not just the players, the event itself. You know, there's there's been so many amateur pool players around the world that have been messaging me non-stop, wanting to know how they can qualify for the event. Obviously we have 128 players, professionals on the circuit, and then the open events are made up by 128 amateurs. So qualifiers will take place before this. And obviously people are desperate to get in the event because they've seen it last year, the fan base was phenomenal. You know, we had 3,000 people for the final, and you know, it's just a place where pool players want to come. So many pool halls here, and you know, the vibe, they're so busy. I went to a club last year, 100 tables, there were five players to each table. It's a, it's a special place. It's a place we didn't know really existed in the pool world. So, you know, big things are happening in Vietnam and Hanoi. Well, I can't wait for the event, um, but I don't know about you, I am roasted. So let's grab some mopeds. Let's get to this pool hall. Sound okay? Yeah, I need to change the t-shirt. Yeah, well. change the t-shirt, no worries. <laughs> Oh, we're in a, not a nightclub, it's actually a pool hall. <laughs> Talk about the venue, it's insane. Yeah, it sounds like a nightclub. Luckily, they've turned the music down. We know some pretty high people in this place. Mm. This is the pool hall of Annia. He actually owns 10 pool halls in just Hanoi alone. 10 clubs he has, Jack, and he's a very, very, very good player. He's actually one of the top 10 players from Vietnam. We're going to get to watch him play in a minute. We've also got another player, Win Antoine, who we'll also get to watch. But just a quick word about the club, Jack. Have you ever been in a club like this yourself? No, no. I think the, like what we have in the UK is is a is a pool pool table in a pub, and that's the best it gets. Really, this yeah. is this is incredible. This is I've not seen anything like this. It's insane. But talk to me about these two players. Obviously, one's a world nine ball tour star. Um, what can you share on them? Yeah, Win Antoine. He's played uh, on the professional nine ball tour for a couple of years now. He's renowned as one of the best Viet Vietnamese players we have. He played in the Premier League. Didn't do too well there, but he's a very, very dangerous player. He's a lefty, and we know what lefties are like. We've got Joshua Filler, Jason Shaw, probably other players that I've missed as well. They seem to pop the ball a lot easier than right-handed players. I don't know if that's because I'm right-handed, but they just have a knack of making it look easy, so he's very talented. And Anya, believe me, he can play as well. I was at the Perry Open last year, and he went pretty deep. I think he ended up losing to Fedor Gorst. I commentated on the match, maybe Feliciano, I can't remember, but last 16 quarters, very talented player, as you can see in practice in a way here, Jack. And uh, do you know what? This is just phenomenal. It's absolutely packed. Yeah, it's insane. You've got two rooms, you've got one over there, and you've got this huge room with, I think, what, 20 tables? It's, yeah, it's incredible. Tables, yeah, and there's probably three, four players on each table and we said this and I spoke to um, one of the ladies who works in the club 
And I said, oh, is the club always like this? She said, yeah, seven days a week, 24-7. Can't get a table. Crazy, crazy. You'd like to think there'll be a, a Vietnamese champion soon. A world champion, yeah, it's a good point you've raised. I think, you know, with, with facilities like this and bringing the World Nine World Tour to Hanoi, and obviously Perry Opens, another big tournament. I know they want to do more events. Listen, match room don't mess about, there'll be more tournaments in Vietnam. And, you know, when you've got facilities like this, I didn't have anything like this growing up. Not just about coming and practising and having a great club, it's about the environment, the vibe. You know, you want to come in here, don't you, and have a game of pool, just because it's like a night club, isn't it, Jack? It's incredible, it's incredible. Anyway, let's see how these two get on. We're at another great venue, the Sam Billiards. Uh, talk me through the day, particularly your match against Emily. Yeah, obviously, uh, we've come to the second club of the day. As you can see, another club that's absolutely packed. You know, it's about 11 at night, can't get on a table. Luckily, me and Emily managed to catch a table in the corner. I had to play blindfolded, but I still beat her. She's no good. Listen, I don't know about you, Jack, but it's been a long day. I've spilt fruit all down my white T-shirt. I think it's time to call it a day. I think so too, but we'll be back soon. Hanoi Open, 8th to the 13th of October. I can't wait, don't know about you. No, don't miss it, it's going to be a fantastic week of action on the pool table.